I'm Emily Klein. I'm a geochemist in the Division of Earth and Climate Sciences in the Nicholas School of the Environment at Duke. My name is Brian McAdoo. I'm an Earth and Climate Science professor here at the Nicholas School of the Environment. I'm a graduate also of this program. I finished my degree in the Department of Geology back in 1991. I came to Duke in 1989. I was the first woman hired in the geology department. In the 1980s when I originally came to Duke, my goal was to be an economics major, but I had to take a science class and I absolutely fell in love with geology. My junior year, I was part of the first class Emily Klein taught here at Duke. Shortly after I arrived, Duke University was starting to create what would become the School of the Environment. There was some trepidation on the part of the geology department at that time to join the School of the Environment. And the reason for that is we consider ourselves doing basic research. We're addressing fundamental questions about how the Earth works. Yes, they may have and often do have important implications for society, but not always. Those of us who work on geologic processes that take place on long time scales, such as myself, it was questionable how we would fit. Boy, Emily was a hard professor, and the only all-nighter I did at Duke University was studying for her final exam for her rocks and minerals class, which I, I passed just. When I was a geology student here at Duke, a lot of our work was focused on rocks and minerals and understanding the basic mechanics of the planet, how plate tectonics work, and how the Earth and the atmosphere interact with the oceans as well. But now that science has really evolved to understand how these Earth systems, these tectonic cycles, these hydrologic cycles, these atmospheric cycles, all come together to impact humans. Universities across the world have been expanding the definition of what geological sciences is. It's not just simply hard rock geology. It is one of the important sciences that studies climate change, how the atmosphere works, hydrology, precipitation, how the oceans work, glaciers. All of those are part of the broader earth sciences. Most of my research is done at sea on large research vessels. I study volcanoes that are on the bottom of the ocean. Using echo sounding or towing a camera on the bottom of the ocean, collecting rocks. I've taken dozens of undergraduates with me to learn how science is done at sea. One of the things that our division has always prided ourselves on is experiential teaching. There is nothing like getting students out into the field and observing the Earth as it really is. Over the years, we've run very popular field trips that go to Hawaii, to the Florida Keys, Ireland, Yellowstone. They're life-changing. When I was a student here at Duke back in the 1980s, I had actually never slept outside in a tent before. And the first time I did was a field trip going out to the Smoky Mountains to learn about the structural geology and how these ancient mountain belts were built. And the memories of sitting around a campfire, telling stories about past adventures in the field, really got me hooked. We can read textbooks, we can understand theory to our blue in the face. We have to understand that foundational stuff. But then getting outside and actually seeing where does reality divert from the theory is where things get really interesting. It's been fun to see the, the new directions that earth science, earth and climate sciences are going. There's a whole social science aspect to it as well. Environmental economics, environmental policy, the effect of changing environments on ecology, habitats, and human populations. Earth sciences really remains the foundation of most of the things we do here in the Nicholas School of the Environment. My undergraduate class, we look at natural resources that exist here in North Carolina, and the geology provides a foundation for. Working with the Catawba Trail Farm, a nonprofit that's based here in Durham, we look at how the legacy of racism in North Carolina has left black and brown farmers with more marginalized soils for which to farm. One of the fun things which has been different than from when I was a student is being able to incorporate different technologies into the classroom and have students get hands-on experience. We're also looking at geothermal right here on Duke's campus figure out if we have the right geology to support a geothermal supplement for our heating and cooling plants here on campus. If we can actually prove the concept that this can work here, maybe we'll reduce our carbon output by up to 20 to 50 percent. 
to understand things like systemic racism or economic injustices without understanding how these earth systems work from plate tectonic systems and recycling rocks, mountain building, earthquakes, to also the minerals that we're relying on for our energy transition. So much of the things that we're interested in studying in the environment to make the environment more sustainable and also less impactful for human communities around the world. My research group here at Duke University, we call the Planet Lab. We're trying to understand how Earth systems interact with community resilience to reduce the impact of natural disasters, which are becoming increasingly common. One of the amazing benefits of having a background in geology is to understand what we call deep time. And deep time can be relative. I mean, deep time can go back to the beginning of the the solar system 12 billion years ago, it can go back to the beginning of Earth 4.8 billion years ago, or it can go back to, to more recent time where we may not have a good historic record. And understanding how extreme weather events, for example, are impacting our region here in Durham, first thing we do is go back and look at the history. You know, what were newspapers saying about temperatures 100 years ago? Do we have temperature records that go back 100, 150 years, maybe? Maybe 200 years if we're really lucky? If we want a record that's longer than 200 years and really shows how temperatures were changing prior to industrialization, we need to have different tools, and those tools come in the form of geology. That geologic record provides an invaluable tool to understand, better understand how humans are impacting our climate systems, our water systems, is truly extraordinary. It's fantastic to have earth and climate sciences embedded here in the Nicholas School of Environment. We really need to understand these foundational elements of earth sciences and increasingly climate sciences to understand how these earth systems work and how they're impacting communities everywhere.